This is this is doing my head in. Okay. Can you can you help me find Wally? Can you can you spot the goober? Where's Wally? Can you see? Alright, obviously it's 2 p.m. and um yeah, you welcome to the lunch and learn. We just kicking off. But I really wanted to find Wally first before I came to speak to you guys. You know why? I'm gonna use this um, a little bit later on in the in the show. Um, yeah, my name is Prosper Taringa, and I'm really really excited that you're joining me on this lunch and learn today, where we're talking about how to actually analyze your market and how to find the best. Uh, you know, customer and how to actually speak to them. So before we started this, I just took um, my little girl's book here and I was trying to figure out how to find Wally um, in a mirror or in a sea of all these people. And you can check, they don't make it easy, these people, you know what I mean? You got to figure out where Wally is in there. And um, you, you know what, what's this symbolic of? It's exactly what we're doing every single day trying to find who our customer is it's exactly what we're doing every single day trying to peddle our products and find out who exactly um is the right fit for our product who will purchase who will purchase today tomorrow and forever okay trish thank you so much for tuning in i'm hoping you had a fantastic um you know weekend and i'm really glad we had that little talk that we did because um you know we kind of connected a little bit and tyler thank you so much for tuning in all right so okay guys besides searching for wally i want you to help you find your own wally today christian thank you so much for tuning in all right, so whatever your business model or um, whatever you're doing or whatever you're going to try and start in the future, you're always going to want one very important thing. And that one very important thing is a steady flow of new clients and customers. Guys, it is really important for you to even want to scale or if you, even if you want to grow any any business or any online business, you got to have people that are paying you money and saying, yes, we like your products and saying, yes, we'll buy some more. Alex, how's it going? Hope you had a good weekend and you're enjoying um, this lunch and learn so far. So without doubt, the more clients that you get, the more successful your business becomes and Obviously, without any clients or without any customers or without any people giving you cash flow, without any people paying any money into your business, you actually do not have a business. Having a blog, having a website, having an email list, but if people are not paying you, that's not a business, all right? So I'm going to try and help you out on that part um, because I find it very um, confusing for a lot of people that they think they have a business but nobody is paying them to support their products nobody is paying them to actually vouch that their product is usable or they can um, you know um, refer it to other people uh, she says so I went um, that week oh so <laughs> so did that week was a turning point for me cut me off God Tiana Scott how's it going great stuff all right so it's, it's not easy and I, I get it. You know, we, we, we are in a place now where customers are so used to big companies just spending a lot of money to reach out to them that our customers and our prospects have now become so spoiled that if you're not writing an email saying, hi Trish, I know you've got a do daughter who is a lawyer and um, I'm sorry that, you know, you're... I'm happy that your graphic design business is going well. Clients are, are not going to listen to you. All right. And it's become so difficult in this day and age to, the, to just throw ads at people and expect them to respond. And that's the reason why our ad spend is really going up. And that's the reason why everything is becoming expensive and difficult for us to reach the right kind of customer who has the pain, even if they do. All right, but then we still have to penetrate through to where they are because of all the noise. All right. So if you have worked with me before, one of my biggest mantras or my maxims 
over the years is I'm also still learning this stuff. And when I come, um, you know, when I come into, you know, when, when I do these lives and speak to you, I'm also really trying to see if I understand what I've been learning because every single day is a learning day for me. And that's the reason why I'm just, I use these videos as a reference for me as well, because I sit back and I watch them on a the big screen on the, on the, um, over the weekend so that I learn as I go and see if I'm on track with what I really want. And what I have seen, which is, you know, one thing that I do the most is before I open my mouth, yeah, before I open my mouth or anything else, I want to make sure I'm providing value or I know who I'm speaking to. All right. There's no point in you trying to speak to somebody who is Russian and selling them, um, you know, um, a, a, a Japanese manga or you, you're trying to sell them something that is not in their language. They're not going to understand it. OK, so maybe you want you want to communicate with your doctor and um, he only maybe understands uh, German. All right. How is he going to explain to you what's wrong with you if he can if you don't understand his language? All right. So it's like wanting to talk to a toddler. I've got a two year old. Every time I'm trying to say something, I go back a little bit and I'm like, wait a minute. She doesn't understand all these words. Let me speak in terms of how she understands it. So communication really, really lies solely on whatever, whatever you, you, you are putting out there. And if somebody is listening and if somebody understands you, then they get to buy from you. All right. It went, no matter how good your product is, no matter how nice you're presenting your ads, if somebody is not getting you, you are not getting to them. All right. So, you know, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of business people that I work with um, in my other side of the business, which is the SEO and the AdWords. Um, a lot of people have heard of the concept of communicating the benefits and not just the features. OK, because people don't understand why it's so cool to have a state of the art, um, you know, something if they don't understand why, what's in it for them in them purchasing that, um, that thing. All right. You need to clearly let them know why they have to, and why it's a good idea and why it's a good decision for them to purchase your book, for them to purchase your course. And then you let them know that they are here right now. Your product is going to bring them there. OK, that's all they need to understand. So you you really want to make sure you identify the benefits and for you to identify the benefits and communicate them effectively. You need to understand your customer. You need to understand their goals. You need to understand their fears. You need to understand their dreams. You need to confirm their asp um, you know, suspicions. You need to ally with their fears and you need to make sure that they realize that you are strong enough to look after them. You need to know what their needs are and how they want to be served. So it's always constantly changing. All right. You are not the same person you were last year. You're not the same person you were when you were 16, unless you're 16 right now. All right. So people are constantly changing and evolving and growing. Your business communication, your business, um, you know, marketing should also be doing the same. All right. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be if you said it today, then that means that's that's the end of it. Do you know what I mean? I've met a lot of people in my digital marketing business that just identify their market as um, so prosper or let me say detria. Who do you sell to? Oh, anyone, anyone who's got um, a problem with money, I can help them. Anyone who's got a problem with um, their daughter or their, their, their kids or anyone who's got a mindset issue, I can help them. Let me explain to you how not everyone is your customer. Let's hypothetically choose an age. All right. Let me do this with you so that you can actually see this um, and see how it actually works. This, there's going to be two people. Okay. Let's say three. All right. Let's say you are looking to reach out to a female that's age 26. All right. Let's look at uh, look at that age, particularly age 26. All right. Most of them that are age 20. Oh, it's going to look the other way. But then, OK, that's going to be funny. Most people that are age 26, they're probably doing their career run. 
or they're being a stay-at-home mum. All right? That woman is still the same age. They're still the same sex, but they're totally two different people now. Because the other one is a career woman and the other one is a stay-at-home mum. All right. So the information that goes to a career woman is about empowerment, is about how she can be better at work, how she dresses better at work, how she can be good amongst her colleagues. And the information that goes to the stay at home mom is totally different. What she wants to know is how to make better meals at home, how to look after the family, how to um, not trip over toddlers and how to make sure she's got both her legs shaved at the same time. You know why? Because the baby's always in the way. Now, automatically, those people already have two different needs. They've got two different wants. They've got two different goals. They want to go to two different places, but they're still the same age and the same sex. So if you are targeting a 26-year-old woman and you're not being specific about what stage in her life she is, then you've lost that lady. All right, so all that stuff that we're doing, say, okay, my target audience is 18 to 38. That's too vague. That's too broad. An 18-year-old is really trying to get rid of zits. A 38-old person is really trying to keep the lights on. And those are two different needs in two different people that you think you're targeting. So that's why when then you hit your ads to them, they are falling on deaf ears. Right. It's, it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty, uh, you know, difficult and not to mention expensive to let everyone know about your product and your service because they're just going to be like, Meh, it doesn't affect me today. So you specifically need to find the people that are most likely to buy your product. You know, you when you do that, there's a few questions that you really got to ask, because I know that every person that I've been working with. The first thing I ask them is, who are you, who's your target and why should they care? And they're like, oh, yeah, I want to speak to the 20-year-old, you know, to the 38-year-old, um, you know, woman that's sophisticated. All right, a housewife could be sophisticated, but she's not sophisticated enough to want to buy a, um, what do you call it? an iPad for business with business apps. So that's a totally different woman. And if you're, you know, spending your ad dollars towards that woman, she doesn't want a, 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 you know, a state-of-the-art app. She wants something that her daughter can use because you know what? She's the lady that's just staying at home. But they're the same age and they're the same sex. All right? So you really want to ask yourself these questions. If you're writing anything down, please take note now. All right? Because I'm going to be reading what I wrote down so that you can save yourself a lot of money while you're reaching out to people out there. Okay? And also, if you think this video is valuable, please stop sharing it now because this is when it's now starting to, to get interesting. All right? You want to ask yourself a question. Why would anyone want your product or your service? All right. Have you ever asked yourself this question right now? You might be selling, um, you know, coaching services. You might be selling a uh, mindset or you might be selling uh, purses or whatever it is on online. Why would anyone want that product or that service? What need is it filling? And if you cannot list the benefits or the problems that it's solving, all right, it's going to be difficult for you to actually relay that information to anybody else who doesn't care. Remember, everybody else is out there doing whatever they want to do. They're not just waiting for you to bring your ad or to, to, to give you a second chance to explain to them why they should care. All right. So, you know, even if you, you, you want to make sure you, you list those benefits. And once you've listed those benefits, communicate them in such a way that the, 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 the prospect sees. All right. Look at it in their own eyes. Say it in their own words. All right. Do you know what I mean? So in what way is this going to improve the life of the user? Otherwise, you're just spraying and praying with your marketing. If people don't understand why they should be sharing this video, that's the reason why they won't share it. So, but, but if you understand why you should share it, then, then this is the part you share it. You, you, you just have to share it now. Did you, did you share it? <laughs> All right, so figure out in your own opinion, who is most likely to need this product? Who is most likely to buy this product from me? And be as specific as you can. 
All right? You need to know how old they are. Are they male or are they female? Where do they live? All right? And 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 where do they work? Because where they work matters. If they don't leave the house, then that means when you're going to be sending them um you know, you know content, there's not any chance that they're going to be reading that content while they're on the train. Does your content have to be long enough because they're sitting down and, and relaxing? Or does it have to be bite-sized? You know why? Because they're just going from station A to station B and you've targeted them at 5 p.m. knowing that that's the time they, they leave work. And once you start knowing your customer up until that intricate level, it, it makes it a whole lot easier for you to now communicate to them, to actually relate to them exactly what their needs are, and you just be the person that solves that problem for them. Yeah? Because what we're dealing with here is people that have a pain, all right? And you are trying to give them a product, that payoff is what they want. If you cannot communicate this payoff to them, then you've lost them at hello. All right, so you want to make sure that these people that are your primary target, you know exactly what is happening around them, within them, you know? Like, you know, the last couple of days, it was Father's Day. All right, cool. Did anyone put out a campaign, you know, geared towards fathers? There's a lot of fathers out there that are probably stressed out. You know why? Because they can't see their kids, their work. They may need counseling. If you were a counselor, did you do anything to reach out to those dads at that time? Because you don't know what your customer is going through or you don't know what they're celebrating, that will make it difficult for you to actually relate. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't mean you have to you know, you know, spread yourself too thin. What you actually really need is just 250 people that are loyal to you. And then from then you can just keep selling those people, whatever it is. So your mission is to just go out and find those 250 people, period. And if you do it over four years, then you have your 1,000 people. And those 1,000 people become your dedicated customers that will buy from you, that know, like, and trust you. And it's easy for you to grow with them. And when you grow with your customers, it's easy for, for you to understand what stage they are. And then you just, you know, find out what they need and continuously deliver it to them. Because right now, I know what we're doing. What we're doing is just spraying and praying and hoping that something would stick. But it, it doesn't work like that. I'm talking from the experience of all the clients that I'm talking to. They are not really specifying who their target audience is. So you need to figure out how does your primary target or those people that you're talking about, you know, who are they buying from? What are the existing products that they're actually purchasing and, and how are they paying for them? All right. What, what, what are the sources um, of information? Are they influenced to? Is it word of mouth? Are they watching news? Is it, is, it, is it somebody else's blog? What trade publications are they found on? Are they, are they looking for things on the yellow pages? Are they coming to the internet to search for information? You need to know all that stuff so that you are there where your customers are searching. Gone are the days where you just have to be on every social media platform. You know why? Just because you know you had to. Right now, you really got to create and relate to the people that matter the most. Because if you're just going to spread yourself thin and then just be available, you know why? For the sake of being there, then you're wasting your time. You're wasting airtime time. You're wasting the internet space and you're wasting everybody's time. All right, this is how you probably can go around and figure out what your customers are doing right now. Look at your competition. Your competition already has testimonials. Your competition has already got frequently asked questions. Go in and find out what people are thanking your competition for. All right, find out, oh, I thank you for the speedy delivery. Oh, I'm really grateful the colors don't fade off. Oh, I'm really excited. You know, these things are working. And then you go in and make sure your product represents those things that real people are thanking your competition for. If, if your competition is, is, is being praised for, you know, speedy delivery, make sure your items arrive three days earlier. 
If your competition is being praised for customer service, make sure you go in and wash your, your, your customers or your prospects' cars. Do maybe four, five, six things more than what your competition is doing. You know why? Because they're already getting the money from your customers. And they are already um, thanking them for being... <laughs> Oh, your competition is cheap, is it? Yeah, exactly. Just figure out what your your customers are thanking um, your 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 competition for, and then you know just figure out if your product. I mean, it's all about values. Remember, I talked about if it's working for your values, then go for it. But just don't put down your prices. You know, um, just because your competition is, uh, if that's what you mean there, Trish. You know. So right now, if you've got a pretty idea now who to go after, you know, and, and figure out exactly what your market is actually doing, who they're spending money with, etc., etc. Et um, no, they're thanking my, com uh, my competition for being cheap. Okay, so if, if they're co thanking your competition for being cheap, you add more value. Because the, the thing that value is, um, what do you call it? Value is... You, you, you want to make sure that your, your competition is just being taken in for the price, but you are providing much more value that they cannot compare you to what the, the, the competition is, 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 is offering. Okay? And then McCoy says, this, that is what puts you in domination mode. All right, exactly. Because if you're just going to be going out there and not knowing what the people that actually pay for your services are doing, who they're, uh, you know, pr promoting, then how are you going to be talking to them? So you want to make sure you're adding value. What I'm saying here is don't just go and see what your competition is doing and do that. No, I'm saying use that as a yardstick to make sure that you are serving the people that uh, what they actually need. Because I'll tell you something. We, I, I work with websites, all right? I'm looking at my website every single day. Sometimes I've seen it for the last five years and you don't even notice that there's a spelling mistake there because you know why your brain is used to it and it's not looking for that. And then the customer comes in and sees four or five typos and then they're automatically turned off by that. So you need to step out a little bit, see what your market is already, you know, responding to and then just go in and, you know, reciprocate. All right, look around, see, you know, there are lots of companies that are vying for your customer's attention. Your goal is to create value and reflection of your worth rather than cost. Okay, so this is where you want to differentiate yourself. If there's no difference between you and the next guy, it's just going to come down to price. And you don't want to fight that battle. So it's important to understand, like, you know, what I was talking about, Trish, it's really important to understand what the competition is and what the methods they're using to reach out to your customers. You know why? Because sometimes they already have the money to study what the customer wants. They already have the money to send out those servers you probably don't have. So you can just write on them and figure out exactly those people that they're reaching out to. They're also your, 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 your target audience. Okay, and the reason why people are leaving testimonials there is because they are fulfilling a service and just figure out how you can also do it better. Let's say you, you operate a, a, a landscape, you know, service. The competition might be a lawnmower um, manufacturer or they might just have a few people like Jimmy's that, you know, go around there and... They might have, you know, maybe like a, a, a new product, which is a self-propelled mower uh, 2000 or something like that. And it makes it look easy for, for the person to do it yourself. You know what I mean? For, for those people that DIY. You know, to the company that's selling that, you know what I mean? To the company that's selling that, you want to go in and put in your human touch. Because they are selling something that's DIY. You want to go in and say, you know what? I'll cut the edges for free. As, as you know, one of those things. And Tina, thank you so much for sharing. Trish says, yes, I looked, but thanks. I'm going to go in hard and see exactly what it is. Hmm. Okay. All right. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's one of those things. So there's a few questions that will help you get a, a you know, a sort of a clear picture of, of, um, of where you fit in within the market segment. All right. You want to know that who and what is the competition. You know, you want to include every person that currently serves that problem you, that your product or your service is addressing. 
you shouldn't overlook what other people are being offered to every single day because in the news feed this is what happens in the news feed all right let's say somebody's scrolling through um there's there's your competition there they have an ad and then there's uh, cats there, and then there's an ex-boyfriend, and then there you are again. And then, you know, your competition comes in there. So it's not just you that's reaching out to these people. Your competition is doing that too. So figure out what it is that, you know, they um, wh how they're solving this, you know, problem for their customers. And make sure you're doing a lot better. The thing that we have is we might have competition that's a really big, big company. They cannot make decisions as fast as you can. That's the advantage that you have as a solopreneur or as a small business. All right? You know what I mean? And also, if the competition is very, very steep, find out if there's still room in the, in the market for, for, for another competitor. If the answer is no, you might look to see, you know, if there's another segment that you can add value to. Because some of us are just hanging on to something just because it was your idea. But if there's just so much competition that you cannot really fight with, you know what I mean? You, you, you may want to just maybe refine your service and figure out exactly who are you serving and why do they need to pay attention to you. Okay? So you, you, you want to really specify why would your customer come to you specifically or click on your ad as compared to the one of your competitors. This is where you now really, really, really define your value proposition, okay? You know, they might come to you for a number of reasons. First of all, it might be convenience. Second, it might be your price, like what you're talking about there, Trish, or the reputation that you've built for yourself, you know what I mean? Or the quality of the goods that you're providing, maybe the expertise that you might have because some people are smarter than the others, or, you know, your, 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 your customer service is a little bit better, you know why? Because you actually care. You know what I mean? And whatever recommendations that you have fostered along the way and people are recommending recommending your service, um, you know, so that you, you know, you, you, you get more business. Whatever is floating your boat or bringing in customers, you always constantly have to check why and see if you can break it. Because it's, it's, it's a gift to actually have people sit down and, and, and watch your stuff comment on your stuff, copy it. You need to find out why that is happening and actually go in and do more of that. Don't sit back and be excited and be like, oh yeah, this is exciting. Find out why Trish keeps coming back. Find out why Tina keeps coming back. Find out why that is and then just go out and find out how many more Trishes can you bring back? How many more Tinas can you bring back into your ecosystem? All right. So in addition to, to all of that, you know, especially the competition, it's very, very useful to understand the bigger industry that you're playing in, as well as, you know, who else is there and who else needs me? Not just being going on in blinkers. You know why? Because if, if your product is, is, is this whiteboard markers, can you not find out if you can start creating smaller, um, you know, pads where people can actually write and erase you know this is my new favorite thing it's a pt you can't you can't see it on this thing yeah you you know what i mean it's made by the same guys that make this so they're diversifying into the market you know why because there's so many people that make this kind of pens but very few people make the effort to to extend you know the the, the use of the pen does that make sense because we're just probably being romantic about the product that we started off with, but we're not looking at how else we can add value to our customers. But you can only do that if you understand your market. This then goes down to you knowing yourself. You know, now that you've chosen your, your target audience and you actually understand the competition and the landscape, how do you then fit in? Right? You need to, I don't know if you guys have learned this, but you need to figure out the, the SWOT analysis. You know, you want to know your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and threats that might, you know, hinder you from reaching into that target audience. 
So there's quite a lot of things that, um, you know, working around. It's not just a matter of putting out a Facebook ad, guys. It's not just a matter of putting out a Google AdWords. It's not just a matter of writing a blog. You got to figure out who your customer is. You got to figure out where to find them, who they're listening to. And you got to figure out how the competition is serving that particular customer. And you, how do you feel about you being amongst the mix? What value are you bringing? Because we only get paid in direct proportion to the value we're bringing into the marketplace. Now, how are you making a difference? Do you know what I mean? How then do you stand there and start complaining that people are not buying from you if you're not serving them? So if you're not honoring your core values, you're not delivering a service and very much, you know, being expressive of how passionate you really are and how long you're going to be in the business. It's going to be very hard for you to get people to buy your stuff. If you're not com com communicating what you stand for, what your, your, your company stands for, and you're not really being clear about who your target audience is, people will just watch. And those that really get you will share your stuff, just like you're about to share this video now. Please share this video. Because I know somebody really needs to hear this. So if your business is actually understanding and operating from an ethical you know, point of view, it will be very easy for you to align yourself with your target audience. You know why? Because you just go out and find people that really, really resonate with you. And if you're fake, it's going to be difficult for you to go out there. You know why? All those things that I just mentioned. All right, so it's going to be easy for you to have satisfied customers and if you do grow bigger, fulfilled employees and you get the industry respect, you know why? Because you're not, you know, brushing on people's toes, you're not um, having bad reviews here and there or making the industry look bad. You know, some people just go in it without the whole ethical core that you will, you will easily go in and go out and become a one-click wonder. Do you know what I mean? You know, grand opening, grand closing, because there's so much that is involved besides you just putting out an ad there. All right. So I basically really want to help you guys. I mean, seriously, there's so much that you might need to learn. You might have learned it before, but if you really want to take a closer look at the um, blueprint, where we'll help you really get the right kind of person, figure out what their pain is and produce a product that they really want, and then create content that engages them, educates them and inspires them while providing value and also positioning yourself as the person that can solve this problem. It will be easy for you to actually solve these um, solutions and you're no longer selling. You know, you just do a bit of online marketing with a few calls to action. You know why? Because these people already know, like, and trust you. And once you start doing that, you already have, you know, relationships. You've got that authority that, you know, stays within your business. You are branding yourself every single day. You've got a community of people that perpetually buys from you. And you're building loyalty and ambassadors within your business. And it's a whole full cycle. This is how money is made on the internet. If you want a blueprint to this or this four-step system, just type in blueprint right now. And then I'll send you through a copy. Okay. So, you know what I mean? If you're a business person and you're not responding to the external demands of what, you know, the current customer really wants, you're only in it for the short term. You will ultimately start paying the price. First of all, it's going to be easy for you, to, uh, very expensive for you to reach out to those people. It's, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to actually um, be sustainable. For you to build a healthy business as, 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 as opposed to the smash and grab mentality, which a lot of, you know, other companies are doing out there, it's very easy. You want to make sure that your core values are part of the business culture and they're all woven around your business plan. Ask yourself this question. What are my values and how am I honoring them in the way I do business? In the meantime, guys, today is a Monday. I really hope you had a fantastic 
uh, show today. And if you're going to be watching this a little bit later on as a review, just watch it on the big screen. You know why? Because I put in a lot of love in this. I enjoy making these shows. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you keep supporting us. And if you want any topic that you want me to discuss again every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, I sit down here with you guys for 30 minutes and then I just lay it down as much as I can. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much, and I really, really appreciate your time today, and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow.